Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker and today what we're going to be talking about is riding in the dark because it's it's dark appropriately I decided to make the video and actually we we're experiencing the topic I was talking about um, so yeah riding in the dark and also riding in like really kind of crappy stormy weather it's very windy today um, so there's a couple there's a couple of things uh, obviously first things first about riding in the dark if you do not have functioning lights on your bike don't do it <laughs> I see a guy there's a guy who I see riding on this road quite a bit um, not the guy I talked about in a previous video but another, another guy and he uh, he really does not have good lights on his bike and every time I see him I'm like man I can barely see you coming at me and I look out for bikers and it's it's just scary it's scary to think that like a car could pull out in front of that dude and just not see him and it's not the car driver's fault so make sure your lights work that's it's that's step one um you know if you're if you're if your lights look a bit dull try try change like like that don't have that if your lights look a bit dull change try changing your bulbs if that doesn't work uh, have a mechanic look at it maybe there's, there's something wrong with the, the whole electrical system um then after that like this is going to be a boring one but this kind of covers the dark stormy weather and everything because there's obviously a lot of leaves on the ground today as well uh slow down ride more relaxed because it's it's honestly it's what will save you from the un the unexpected thing you can't see and that's that's honestly it's one of my hugest um recommendations i've obviously i've been riding in the dark quite a long time and I'm still not I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you I'm not 100% comfortable with it because riding in the dark is very very unpredictable and um, when cars come against you the thing the thing I think we as, uh, as, as, as bikers forget is you are hard to see uh, on a bike uh, at night so obviously this bike has a has a benefit of being huge so it has a massive road presence and it also has the modern um, lights on it that I spoke about previously. But like what it doesn't have is running lights on the side. So I'd love to see um, the indicators be used as running lights, which is what's on my magnet. Um, so always on and then flashing obviously when you're indicating. I would love to see that because it, it really helps a car know how wide your bike is. Because um, look, I'm guilty of this too. Everyone likes a nice, subtle, stealthy bike. Um, but that obviously doesn't help you then when you're trying to get cars to see it. So a bit of running lights on the sides or something similar to running lights on the sides I think would help uh, a lot to, to keep to keep to help keep us that, that little bit safer um, and, and help cars see us a bit better because it is it's it is a dangerous time to do it here. When you come against cars like this, so you see there, right? As you approach that car and their lights pass you. It's actually very hard to see past them to the next corner or whatever. And in the dark, you can't tell the road condition. So like right now, I don't know. Like right now, I can't see the road condition except right there. And now black, and now I can see it again. You have to let the car get past a little bit and your lights to kind of take back over. Unless you have like really good lights like these ones. Um, because be just beyond the car's lights and that pool of blackness that its lights black out from you because that's how the human eyes work unfortunately if you have a bright light shining at you um, they adapt to the bright light and then they can't see in the dark so well uh, it's it, that's just that's just biology there's not a whole pile we can do about it folks unfortunately um, but that's why I just slow down and wait until I can see past them before making any big decisions on my corner speed my corner cornering line like oh see all this shiny stuff over here I hope you can see it I'm staying off that because I, I don't know is that shiny because there's oil on it, there's water, maybe it's just the road surface, maybe it's absolutely fine, but that's not a risk I'm willing to take because obviously that would, you know, possibly lead to me falling off my bike, uh, which is not something I'm okay with. But you can hopefully see all the water that's being sprayed up by the van in front, that's how kind of stormy it is uh, tonight and it's very, very windy. Um, so, you know, when you're riding in the dark, especially in weather like this, just expect the unexpected there could be a branch up coming off a tree there's there's gonna be water on the road and um, leaves are everywhere and if there's there's the build up of leaves on a corner and you run onto them you could get seriously hurt there too and worse than that you could hurt your bike you know what i mean i'm just kidding 
bikes are fixable they're just a thing um, and that's coming from me and I love my bikes but they are at the end of the day they're just a thing and when you're riding in, in stormy weather then a big thing is uh, watch out for gates so like there was fine but when you're passing along like a hedge or whatever else it's the same you probably if you cycle a, a bicycle the same thing has probably been said to you before um, as you pass the gate you could get a huge big gust of wind which has happened to me twice on the way home today and um, that could just knock you offline so if you're riding now close to the center of the road and there's a car coming against you and you get that big lump of wind into you and moves you obviously get across the road in front of the car you're gonna have a bad time so just be prepared for that if you're prepared for it it's often it, it's it's pretty easy to correct for them unless you have like crazy high winds um, you know if, if that's the case then some 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 weather patterns do call to stay off the bike <laughs> to be honest I know it's really crummy and like sounds like something you know that people said to you when you were kids to expect the unexpected but it is it is like you don't know what's going to come at you you know predator could jump out and try kill you or something or maybe alien and you won't see them coming in the dark so you gotta you gotta watch for that because if they if they come at you in the dark they can see in the dark and us weak-eyed humans can't and that's uh that is no bueno so you don't want that you don't want you don't want to get eaten by alien predator in the dark if they're gonna eat you let it be in the light of day so you can see them eat your entrails and put this has gone too far i'm gonna stop now the other thing obviously is um if you can't see where you're going and i'm actually gonna take yeah i'm gonna take the worst road to make my point even more <laughs> If you can't like this shit, look look at all this this leaves. If you can't see your line or you're not able to judge your line well and there's all this crap on the road, um, just take it extra, extra, extra easy. Don't accelerate hard because if you go over those leaves and stuff and accelerate hard, it's very likely uh, your back's gonna slip out on you. And if that's not a feeling that you're used to on a bike, uh, it can be very scary. It can take you by surprise. Uh, and that's when mistakes get made if you panic you know like a lot of people who kind of get a little slip they just know to ride through it one of the worst things you can do is to grab a fistful of brakes um, because obviously the back of your bike then is like a big pendulum and just swings around and again you're gonna have a bad day so it's it's just something to be prepared for if the back of your bike slips out just ride it out don't don't throttle out of it just keep smooth and steady the back should sort itself out um, unless you've really gotten unlucky in which case it's still a bad idea to grab a fistful of brakes unless you know you're heading definitely towards a wall and just want to bleed off some speed in which case do that but like here now see see the line see the shiny parts of the road hopefully you can I'm staying off those I'm staying off those and now we're going to accelerate towards here and basically I'm proving a point on this speedy bit so I'm gonna slow I can't see what's coming I can see the road in front of me, so I'm gonna bleed off all my speed. Again, bleed off all my speed here. I don't know what's around this corner. Uh, well, I, I do, but that's not the point. You know, imagine you didn't. And there you go. It's lots of leaves, lots of crap. More shiny, shiny road because the top surface on the tarmac is gone. So this is really slippy here. I found that out the hard way a few times, just having little slips. Um, I just slow it down, slow it down. No one likes going slowly but also no one likes crashing their bikes. So slow it down. Now here's a really good example, right? I can see basically nothing. So what I do is I watch the left margin of the road. I didn't even look at that car. I was watching the left margin of the road, keeping as tight as I could to it. So like I was doing this, basically, my eyes were looking at the left margin of the road. That's what I was watching. Um, and obviously this is a poor example because there's no road markings in this section. Um, but in general you would hope you'd have some road markings just this bit of road here has none but just stick to the left hand side when there's a car coming against you if you can't see anything watch your known point of reference your known point of reference is the left hand side margin uh, and that's what I do and just to, again I'm going to reiterate this because I know I put it in, well, I always put it in the description of these type of videos I'm not like a trained instructor or anything take all of my advice with a pinch of salt this is just how I've survived out in the road this is what I do out in the road um, and it's it's what's worked for me. So, like I said, take the advice with a pinch of salt. It's uh, 
It's just, I'm just, I'm just trying to share my experiences with you. The other thing is, I just, I just did it there, right? On wet roads, um, don't ever be afraid to, uh, to brake. You can still brake really hard if you have good tires on. If you're in a straight line and the road isn't like underwater, if there's pools of water, uh, that's how aquaplaning happens. And just be so, so super careful with aquaplaning because it's, it could, ha if it happens, there's not a whole pile you can do, uh, except hope that you come out of the puddle and get a bit of traction back and don't high side. Um, so, you know, there's, there's, don't go through life worrying about it, basically. Just avoid puddles when you can, especially on corners. Um, but like on a dry, like this road is, it's not dry, it's, it's, it's wet, there is a, there is a skin of water on it. But the way roads are constructed is, there's all the gaps for the water to fall into, which is what you're, why you see the dry, the drier bits in the water between it. And what that means is, your tires are designed in such a way that they grip onto that road surface so you can still you can still brake hard just not as hard and you know make sure your bike's in a straight line and that's why i was saying what i was saying earlier about um the corners is you don't know what's around the corner you know what's directly in front of you so get all your braking done on what you can see you don't want to go around the corner realize you need to brake and then try brake on a big load of leaves or something that's going to end really badly for you one of the last things I'm going to say then is uh, really smooth throttle input. So everything you do, including your braking, uh, unless it's in an emergency, um, everything should be smooth. So like throttle inputs, coming off the clutch, gear changes, everything just lovely and smooth. Don't like come out of a corner and ram on the throttle like you're on a racetrack. Uh, I love doing that. It's actually one of my favorite things to do in life, but not in this weather. Because again, you could have a leaf under your tire at the precise wrong moment so like like that just nice smooth acceleration so basically look in the dark uh right to what you can see if you can't see slow down give yourself a chance to react to situations that pop up uh, if there's a car coming against you watch your point of references you know watch the left hand side of the road use that as your track use that as, as what you, you ride to still look through your corners do all that stuff but just don't get dazzled by the car and don't forget that you know you could easily become the deer in headlights and run into run into what you you don't want to run into like here now i'm just watching the left hand side the left hand side and we're good we're back we're back to my full lights on which i can speed up a little bit because i can see again then riding in stormy weather watch out for wind through gates uh watch out for all that stuff um, watch out for branches down, watch out for leaves on the road at this time of year, in this type, in this, this part of the world. Uh, and riding in rain, watch out for puddles, puddles are your enemy. Watch out for painted lines, like the paint there. Um, watch out for multi-colours in, in the, 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 on the road surface. That probably means there's like oil or diesel after spilling and water's moved it across the road. That's more so on roundabouts and stuff. Uh, you'll see stuff like that, so just to be careful of that, that's never, that's never any fun. Um, shiny tarmac, shiny tarmac is a slippy slippy bye bye bunch of misery. Uh, what that means in Ireland, I don't know about other parts of the world, but what it means here is that the top layer of the tarmac has lifted and come away and it's just that the underlay is left and the underlay is really smooth and when water gets on it, it's really slippy. So yeah, watch out for the slippy slippy bye bye. And then the leaves, which are the omens of slip and misery. Um, that's also a big thing so yeah th to be honest it kind of is just standard standard riding behavior ride ride to what you can see if you go back to that and don't try to be billy big bollocks and you know ride outside of your comfort zone like i'm going way slower than i usually would and that's absolutely fine because the weather sucks right now <laughs> i don't mind rain too much but rain mixed with dark mixed with falling leaves mixed with wind it's a recipe for if you go and you try to do too much, you're gonna get in trouble. So just take your time. It's what I've always said to anyone who asks me for advice when they're like, oh, I'm starting off riding, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Take your time. Give yourself a chance. Give yourself a chance to learn from small mistakes that don't let you come off the bike. That, honestly, that's it. Just give yourself a chance and, and you'll be absolutely fine. And you might then even end up enjoying riding in the dark, riding in the rain, riding in the wind, 
I find it, I find it personally, I find it very peaceful uh, and kind of meditative. Anyway, if you watch, thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for joining me on another commute home on the BMW. Um, I do appreciate it. And, and this bike is gone. By the time you see this video, this bike has gone back to my uncle. Uh, I will miss it. I've also made a video on um, have modern bikes spoiled me. So uh, give that a look if you have any interest. I can't see. Ah, like that. So you look at the left hand side of the road. Because uh, when cars and, and trucks come over the crest of hills, by the way, uh, you'll often find you literally can't see anything uh, because their lights are aimed up in the sky and blinding you. Anyway, um, I hope some of that information was helpful. Um, obviously, lastly, just make sure you have good tires on your bike. If you don't have good tires on your bike, uh, don't ride in this type of weather. Don't ride at this time of year. Good tires are key. If you don't have good tires, you are going to have a bad time. They are the single most important thing uh, between you and the road everything else is just secondary no good tires you're gonna have a bad time anyway uh, yeah thank you very much for watching as always a very special thank you to all of my patrons you're all legends um, I appreciate the chats I hope you're all doing well and uh, yeah I'll talk to y'all soon and also a very special thank you to Dermot for lending me his bike this is his bike thank you Dermot and yes, until next time, thank you again for watching. Adios. Outro crew. What do you prefer watching the motovlogs on? Do you prefer seeing me behind the, the bars of this BMW or behind the bars of the CBF? And you can be honest, I won't be insulted if you say this. Uh, I'm just interested. And if it is this or the CBF, then please let me know why. Why do you prefer one or the other? Is it because you're interested in the bike? Or you just think the view is better? Anyway, bye out, truck crew. Uh, thank you. Thank you, yeah, eventually. Eventually you turn them off. Good. Fair play to you.